If you think computing is done, there's a really weird experiment going on in quantum computing, which uh, there are you know, five or six different efforts that think it's 10 years out in this one group, which says we're ready for prime time and scaling. This weird guy from Canada, Jordy Rose, and uh, Google bought the first one uh, in the Bay Area, in Lockheed Martin uh, in Southern California, bought the one before that. But what's astounding is they're applying it to machine learning, which is what Google does across all their new products. And they think it's a path to AI, that this is going to be the best way to do things like image recognition, which they're currently doing, like you know, seeing cats on the internet or recognizing cars or recognizing different gestures for Google Glass so that you can be even more weird with your head as you try to use Glass. Um, but more practically, it's going to be um, just under and underlies everything that Google is doing. If it seems weird and like autonomous cars, under the covers, machine learning and deep learning explains why they're into that industry and they, and they realize they can apply that capability across different sectors. But what gets really weird about quantum computing is if, um, kind of like thinking back to Moore's Law, wrapping this full circle, if you, you know, we first met Jordy Rose and first invested here, he had a one qubit machine and he was waiting for the two qubit version to come out, um, but it hadn't yet, actually, sorry, the two would be here and this is, I think, four on the log scale, uh, maybe a two on the log scale. Um, oh, right, that's the four qubit there. So the two qubit one hadn't come out yet, we invested here, and he said, I think it's going to double every year, number of qubits. So again, logarithmic scale, straight line would be an exponential, but when you add qubits, it's very much unlike um, uh, Moore's Law on, on that other curve. This is like a Moore's Law on top of a Moore's Law. It's more like going from a 32-bit architecture and Intel to a 64-bit. It's like a two to the N phenomenon, roughly. Uh, I mean, there's some derating factors. But it means that it gets pretty, pretty weird pretty quickly, which is, if you fast forward a little bit, we currently have machines that they're making that are competitive with class computers. So after all this work, it's finally kind of like a laptop, that big black box you saw. But you fast forward just, you know, a little bit, it becomes faster than all computers on Earth. Now again, they, they only do one particular type of problem. It's not general purpose computing, but it's you know, graph optimization. It, it maps to machine learning and Monte Carlo simulations and protein folding and stuff. So it's interesting for supercomputing, but here's where it gets really, really crazy. Go forward just a little bit farther, faster than the universe. Now what the hell does that mean? That means if you took all the matter of the universe and reconstituted it into the best computer that Intel could ever design, giving them the length of the universe to work on the problem. So the best theoretical computer that could be built, and you give that universe-sized computer the length of our universe in terms of history, um, how many, you know, the 13 billion years that we've been around, they still couldn't solve problems that the quantum computer could solve readily. That's mind-bending, and, and the only physics explanation for how it works, um, oh, there was that one, for, oh, actually, it was that, uh, oh, yeah, it was just David Deutsch saying that summary. Um, is that it basically engages the computational resources of parallel universes. Now that is a point of, of competitive differentiation you don't often hear in a pitch to say, <laughs> Intel's just using this inner universe, well, how can they possibly compete, right? Um, that's where my head explodes, but I, I think it's, it's pretty exciting. If, if, if I give it a 10% chance that it doesn't hit some roadblock like noise or something that, that makes it fall off the rails, and if it just keeps going a couple more, kind of like Moore's Law, just a couple more dots on that curve, they currently are bringing up their first 1,000 qubit machine as we speak.